Hey Rebel EM subscribers, Salim Rezai here, and today we're going to talk about a case of Weak and Dizzy, one of the favorite complaints I'm sure that we all get, because the differential for this is so wide open. So let's get into the case. So we have a 73-year-old male presenting to the emergency department for weakness and dizziness for three to four weeks. And to get a little further story, it sounds like every time this guy gets up to walk around or exert himself, uh, he starts to feel lightheaded, like he's going to pass out, and then his symptoms kind of resolve um, after he sits back down. Now, on presentation to the emergency department, his vital signs all look pretty good, with one exception, which is his heart rate being in the 30s to 40s. But he looks like he's compensating okay, at least in triage with a blood pressure of 139 over 65. So he's at least hemodynamically stable. And this was his EKG that we ended up getting. Now, I'm going to leave this up for a second while you're kind of gathering your thoughts. But in the end, there ended up being a lot of discussion about this EKG. Um, ultimately, the patient was being admitted, right? So that's not the question here. The question is, is that we need to continue to improve our EKG skills. And so the discussion was, is what kind of AV heart block was this? Was this a first degree heart block, a second degree type one or type two heart block, or was this a third degree heart block? And there was a lot of back and forth between cardiology, electrophysiology, emergency department. And so I thought this would be a great opportunity to talk about heart blocks. And then I will conclude by coming back and telling you ultimately what this patient ended up having. So here's five rhythm strips, and I'm going to go through each of these one at a time to kind of break down heart blocks to make it a little bit easier and a little bit more palatable and simpler to kind of digest and look at when we're looking at EKGs. So this first rhythm strip at the top is normal sinus rhythm, um, and it's the heart rate's just under 100, but essentially the red arrows represent P waves, and the red arrows will continue to represent P waves throughout this video. And what you see is that after every P wave, there is a narrow QRS followed by a subsequent T wave. And so this is basically a normally conducted rhythm. P wave followed by a QRS, then a T. The next rhythm strip just below this is a first degree heart block. And a first degree heart block, as you can see with the red arrows, we have P waves, but then there is anywhere from three to five little boxes of space but before you get the conduction of your QRS. And so the point is, is that it's just a prolonged PR segment, but all your P waves are going to conduct. And we can see that in this rhythm strip. The next rhythm strip down is a second degree type one heart block. And essentially what you have here is now you can see some yellow arrows and those yellow arrows represent the PR segment. And what you can see is with every P wave, that PR segment gets longer and longer until we get to that fourth red arrow where we see a dropped QRS. This is also known as a Mobitz type one or a Winkybach uh, heart block. Then the next rhythm strip down is a second degree type two. And here what you can see is that you have multiple P waves that are kind of marching out, but they're randomly dropping QRSs, but our PR segment or our PR interval remains constant. And that's the key difference between a type one versus a type two second degree heart block is we have these constant PR intervals and we get random drops of our QRS. So if you follow those red arrows, you can see that this is basically uh, randomly on every third beat, we get a, a QRS that is kind of conducting but then on the other two beats, we're not getting that QRS conduction. And then finally, the last heart block is a third degree heart block, which is basically complete disruption of our AV conduction. And what you get here is you get P waves that are just kind of marching along at the beat of their own drum. And then you get QRSs that are just kind of wide and kind of going at the their own pace. And really the key here is, is that look at the first two red arrows. So the first P wave does not conduct. The second P wave has this kind of prolonged PR. And then the third red arrow, the P wave is actually buried in our T wave. And then we can see that the next two arrows, we have those P waves again. And then that last red arrow, we can see that just after our T wave, we get a little bit of a, a P wave. 
And so these things are just kind of going along at their own pace. Another way to think about this is looking at the PR interval. And so if we look at first degree heart block, which is the second rhythm strip, and we look at the second degree type two heart block, the key thing here with these two is our PR intervals in our conducted beats are going to remain constant. We can see that in the first degree heart block where the red arrow represents our P wave, the blue arrow represents our QRS, and then the yellow arrow is our, our PR segment. And you can see as you have the three red arrows and the three blue arrows that that PR segment remains constant on that second rhythm strip. We can also see that in our second degree type two heart block where yes, we are randomly dropping QRSs, but the ones that are conducting, if you look at the red three red arrows and the three blue arrows, that PR segment remains constant between those, uh, those conducted beats. Now, when we look at second degree type one and third degree heart block, that's not the case. Our PR interval is going to be variable. And so you can see in the third strip down from the top, this is our second degree type one heart block. The red arrows represent our P waves, the blue arrows again are QRSs, and what you can see is that the yellow arrows are our PR segments. And in the conducted beats, we can see that that yellow arrow is kind of variable. We get the same thing in the conducted beats with a third degree uh, heart block. We can see that that P wave is very variable. When we look at the red arrow and we compare that to the blue arrow and we see the yellow arrows, we can see that there's a lot of variability. So this is just another way to kind of help uh, devise in your head a construct of how to determine what these heart blocks are. I found this online and I, I thought this was just a nice simple way of kind of remembering this. So first degree heart block is a far away P, right? So we're going to have at least three to five little boxes before our QRS. A second degree type one is going to be a longer, longer, longer than drop. Um, and so we can see that with our PR intervals getting progressively longer. A second degree type two is going to basically be a drop randomly. Um, and then finally, a third degree heart block is our P waves and our QRSs are beating independently. So back to our patient case, and then I'm going to kind of summarize all this for you in a way to make this simple. So we're going to look at lead V1. And the red arrows, again, represent our P waves. And I have three of them marked out for you. And our blue arrows are our QRS. And if we look at the first red arrow, we have a non-conducted P wave. If we look at the second red arrow, we can see our PR segment there, and then a, uh, a QRS represented by the blue arrow. When we get to the third red arrow, we can see that PR segment is getting progressively longer, and then we have a QRS. So what this actually represents is a second degree type one heart block. We get longer, 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 then we drop a beat, and we have variability in our PR segment. So that's what our patient ended up having, a heart rate of 34 on the CKG, a second degree type one heart block with a normal axis and a bifascicular block represented by a right bundle branch block and a left anterior fascicular block. So in summary, the heart blocks, first, second, and third degree. And an easy way to remember this is, first thing I look at is, are my PR segments constant or variable? because that already will narrow it down to two choices. And then far, far away P is a first degree heart block. Remember that your P waves will always conduct in a first degree. Second degree type one is gonna be variable PR segment, but longer, longer, longer than you drop. Second degree type two is gonna be a constant PR segment. You're gonna drop randomly. So you'll have P waves that don't conduct and randomly have ones that do. And then finally a third degree is gonna be a variable PR. Uh, segment, but your P and your QRSs are going to beat independently. So there you go. A case of weekend dizzy talking about heart blocks. Hopefully that's helpful. Please let me know your thoughts, comments, and questions. And until next time.